So this lesson, we are going to be connecting to the Stack Exchange API. This is an open API where we're going to be looking through and retrieving back information and then outputting that within the page. We're going to be constructing the page elements using JavaScript and creating elements on the fly and dynamically generating the elements, populating them with the JSON data that's coming from the Stack Exchange API and building them out onto the page and constructing them within an HTML structure that we can also look at within under the elements. So there's the title. These are the tags. So these are created separately as we loop through the tags array. And then there's the hyperlink to going to the source for the Stack Exchange post. We connecting to the Stack Overflow API. So I've created a JS file called apps12.js and I've got the connection to the page elements. The API endpoint is going to be located at apistackexchange.com and then there's a version for the API and then we're selecting the questions object and this is where you can get more information as well about the API. And the versions will change so be aware that this is an ever-changing API so it is good for practicing but it's not good for a live connection in order to retrieve back the data. You can also register for an API key to get more authentication. There's additional documentation on the website and it gives you some more information about the rate limiting and also there's a JavaScript SDK which is a library that you can use in order to connect to this API. We're going to be looking at the questions API. There's an API tester at the bottom where you can run the API and retrieve back information from the API. So let's go ahead and we're going to connect to the API bring those values in. So the base URL is going to be the api.stackexchange and then the parameters that might be changing, so the version might be changing as well as what endpoint you want to connect to. So I'll just select this. Now let's go back to the application and we'll make a connection to the API and I'll just remove out some of the excess content there. So we'll connect to the API using the button on click method. So that's going to invoke the event. And within the event, we're going to make the connection to the URL. So let's build the URL and dynamically create it by connecting and concatenating the path URL and the base URL. And then let's use the fetch request to the URL. And once we do get the response back, we can see the response object and return it back as a JSON object. And then take that JSON object and it should be returned back as data. And we're gonna output it in the console just to make sure that it is a usable JavaScript object and then we can sort through it. So let's click the click me button. Within the path, I do have an extra forward slash, so let's remove that. So let's try it out and retrieve back the data. So we've got an items array and that's the one that we can loop through. So selecting the array that we want to get content from, that's contained within the items object. And we want to loop through all of the items and then output the data. So let's use the function output data and it will get the data array. And within the output data, we can loop through the array. So the data items and using for each, let's loop through and get each one of the items. And we can console log the items out into the console as we deconstruct this object. So this is the content that's being returned back. And we want to output the values. So let's select the properties. So we want to get the title. Also, there's an array for tags. So we get the tags array. And then also for the link for the API. And this is the data that we want to output. So this time, instead of updating the element, we're going to still select the element with the class of output, and we're going to create the elements using JavaScript. So let's add that into our code. We've got the output and using document query selector. Select the element with a class of output, and we're going to be using output as the parent element to add the other elements into. So let's start by creating an element for the main container. And this is going to be our main div. I'll give it a class name of main and then using document 
create element and the element that we're creating is going to be a div and we want to append it to the output so append main to the output element and then within the main let's create some elements so we've got a div that we want to create so using again the document create element create the div and this is going to be the container for the title so we can set the text content of this element to whatever we've got for the item title for the element title and we also want to append the div to main so append the div one and let's see what that looks like so make the request and we need to send the data over to the output data so that was why we weren't getting anything output and within the console once again we're going to output what we're getting in as data and actually i don't need to loop the items so that was where we're getting the error so try that one more time and now we're getting the output of the content on the page so we've got the title and we want to get the tags. So let's create a loop for the tags. So let's contain within the element tags and using for each once again, we can get the tag value, return it back. And we're going to be appending the tags to another element. So we're going to go ahead and create that. So using the create method. And once the element is created, we want to add it to the main tag. And then within here, we're going to be creating some spans. So using the document create element and the type of element that we're creating is going to be a span. And for the span, the inner text or inner HTML, let's uh, do the text content. And this is just going to be whatever the tag name is that's being returned back. And then taking the span, we're going to be appending it to the main. So it's going to be pending the span. And we need to create one more element for the page. Uh, so create one last element that can also be a div pended to main. And then for div three, we'll set the inner HTML. And this is where we can create a link. We can also create an anchor tag, uh, but then we have to also set the attributes. So in this case, it's a little bit easier to set it as HTML. And this is going to be setting up and getting the element link. So the element link object, and then outputting that as the hyperlink. And for the rest of the hyperlink, we'll build the target object as blank. And we can also include the link and then close off the anchor tag. So that can be the inner HTML for the link. So click it, and this is what we get built and retrieving back the data. Let's take a closer look at the HTML content of these items. So within the div and the output, we've created a bunch of divs. And then within this div, so we've got the spans, but they're not at being added into the parent div. And they actually should be going into div two. So once we correct that error, we click it again. And this time the construction of the page elements should be correct, where we've got a div We've got another div with all of the spans contained within it. And then we've got a last div with the hyperlink to the location of the resource that we've requested. And there's a number of other APIs that are available that you can try out and connect to and then retrieve back some of the information back onto your web page. There are limits to the request limits for the day. So just be aware that if you do encounter these, then you've made enough requests from the Stack Exchange server and that it's going to throttle you and limit to you to the number of requests that you can make. So when you are practicing, it is a good way to practice extracting data from a very large, hard to read JSON file. And in order to get more familiar with how you can extract out information and create web page elements dynamically with JavaScript code.